journey here, that journey chick on Instagram. Yes, I have a smile on my face. It's not real. <laughs> yeah. It's just been one of those kind of mornings. One of those mornings where like, you wonder why you got out of bed, right? I don't know, there's no other way to explain it. Just not in a good mood, right? So, <laughs> but we're gonna do the show. <laughs> okay. First, we're gonna start with our planner. Yes, the smile is there. Yes, it is. We're gonna start with our planner. I've already written in what national day it is. I wrote in, it is a loud truck. Yes, I wrote in what happened this day in history. I did not do any social media yesterday other than reposting some uh, diamond paintings that are available from Uniquely Yours Down Under. Check them out, I am an affiliate. There is a link down in the description that will take you to their website and you can use my code once you get there if you happen to see something that you like. And honest to God, um, that's why I like this company. The selection of paintings is amazing. Also, if you do enjoy the content, please hit the like button. Um, my like button enjoy, enjoys abuse. Uh, take it out for a cup of coffee, but then, you know, say, hey, we're going to go to Starbucks and then accidentally go to um, the cheapest coffee place in town and where they don't even have cream and sugar. Yeah, he'll be very disappointed. So <laughs> please subscribe if you're new to the channel. Welcome. We do crafting and crime and I post every day and go live twice a week. So also, if you're enjoying the content, please share this with a friend or someone that you know that might also enjoy it. Get the word out that this is a lovely show to watch while you're crafting. Anyway, um, here's the here's what we did in Craft With Me Wednesday last night. We made wind spinners. So this is where I am on mine. Okay, the body of it is done. I am working on the trim. And mine is going to be a Halloween themed one. See, look at that trim. It's this black and white. Um, I don't know what you call this stuff. But it's, it's going to look really cool for Halloween. And then I'm going to make a little spider that's going to hang down here. So I will show you all that when it's completed. Yeah. Um, if you want to make one, just watch the video. I will put a link to it in, uh, up here. Um, watch that video. It's it's my live, but I do explain how to make the wind spinner. How to make the wind spinner super easy. All you need to know how to do is single crochet and double crochet. All right, we're we're done with this. Yes, we're going into the work today. Now, the next thing, do I have air conditioning? Yes, thank God. So I waited around yesterday. My boss gave me permission to work from home because you know I'm waiting for the air conditioner guy. He didn't give me a time. He just said, I'll swing by. This is the way we do things in Wichita. I'll swing by. Yeah. Uh, so at three o'clock, when I haven't heard from, you know, the guy that's gonna swing by, I give him a call. He made the mistake of giving me his phone number. So I call him and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I should have called you. I, I had to leave work today with a migraine. I, I'm home and I don't feel well. <sighs> what? Okay, so now I'm pissed. So I usually just text my landlord. Well, this time I picked up the phone. She doesn't answer, I leave her a message. She calls me right back. I said, did you listen to my message? No, I didn't listen to your message. So I tell her what's going on. She's like, well, I guess he'll be here tomorrow. I said, no, 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 no. I want this fixed today. Um, I'm not going through another 90 degree evening. And she's like, oh my God, Rebecca, it's not even 90 degrees outside today. Well, it was 86. So, and I've been working out in this heat all day long. She starts yelling at me. So I said, listen, if it, makes you feel better to yell at me, please 
go right ahead, but that doesn't fix the problem. I'm going to have to stay in a hotel tonight, and I'll just deduct it from the rent. She goes, oh, no, you won't. If you stay in a hotel, that's up to you. I'm not reimbursing you for a hotel. I said, then you better get somebody out here to fix the air conditioner. So uh, she's still yelling. She's yelling, yelling, yelling. So I hang up on her. I'm like, I'm hanging up now. I hang up. So then I, I texted her a pretty long text about her rights and responsibilities as a landlord. <laughs> Coming from the uh, lawyer in me. Um, <laughs> the next thing I get is a text. I'm calling somebody else. What? Thank you. So she calls another person. They come out. They're here by 630. They clean out the coils. I have cold air. I'm like, thank you, God. You know, wow. You know, the squeaky wheel, right? Whatever. I'm so, yeah, it's just been a really frustrating week. Yes, 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 yes. All right. I need, I need a pin. So, uh, I am still working on that same symbol 820 in this area here as you can see I've gotten most of it so uh, what I think I'll do is start opening the plastic in this area next um, I did work on this for a bit yesterday but I worked mostly on the wind spinner that I just showed you um, yeah oh boy those are crooked I was I was diamond painting without the light pad because I it wasn't even on the table I was getting ready for my live so some of these are a little crooked. Oh my God, are they ever. It's amazing um, how much the light pad helps you get the drill straight. But the, the good part about squares is once you put down the missing squares, they kind of, they tend to straighten out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> okay. The one national day is today. Today is National Teddy Bear Day. So Teddy Roosevelt, he went out hunting and he refused to shoot a bear cub. So um, I guess they were kind of making fun of him. So he, um, this cartoonist came out with a cartoon that showed, you know, uh, Roosevelt, you know, not shooting this bear. Um, so a toy maker came up with the idea of making a bear to symbolize this cartoon. And they he called it the teddy bear after Teddy Roosevelt. And it kind of caught on. So now we have teddy bears everywhere. I bet you at some point in your life had a very precious teddy bear. Yes. Or you've watched teddy bears on TV. Um, even my dog, Tootsie, she, um, when she was a baby, she had one of those dogs that have a, a heartbeat in it and you can put it in with them to soothe them at night. She had one of those. And for some reason, I guess because she had that as a puppy, whenever I give her a stuffed animal, she absolutely loves them. So if I can pick up like a cheap teddy bear, like one of those seasonal things that goes on sale after Christmas, I'll pick up one for her. She loves them and she does not tear them up. You would think, oh my God, the stuffing is going to be everywhere. No, she doesn't do that. She, um, she really cherishes her stuffed animals. Now I had an aunt that collected these really expensive bears. I forget what they were called. Super expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess we all collect something. I collect yarn and diamonds and diamond paintings. So uh, my aunt collected teddy bears. They even had a house fire in their home one year. And um, I think she had to get them cleaned or something from the, you know, the smoke from the fire. But yes. So tell me what... Do you still have a special teddy bear? Do you enjoy watching one on television? Or do you have a favorite character that is a teddy bear? Let me know down in the comments.
You know, I enjoy your comments. I read every one of them. Um, even the ones that are four and five paragraphs long. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> I read it. <laughs> yeah, these, these, I feel like this symbol is just never going to end. <laughs> it's, it's coming, it's getting, no, it just goes all the way up up the painting. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> so, so I am going into the office today. <sighs> yep. But I, I slept so good last night with that AC on. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it felt really good. It took a while for the house to cool down because it was about 86 in here by the time the guys came at six o'clock last night. So by the time they left, I'm going to say seven o'clock, 630. Um, I don't know, about about nine o'clock, it got com really comfortable. So yeah. Anywho, yeah. So Let's talk about the trial. It was back on yesterday and they went, they had two witnesses and I don't, I don't even know if they completed the second witness. The second witness was very long. So let me just recap for you very quickly. If you're new to the channel, um, let me just say that all of the trials that I cover are playlisted. So if you've missed any of the episodes, you can go back on the playlist and go back and see, you know, see which portions of the trial that you missed so you can catch up on what the evidence is. Because what I like to do is bring you the evidence that's presented to the jury and put you in place of the jury and have you make a decision as to whether, in this case, Stanley Ford is guilty of arson and nine counts of first degree murder. So right now we're going through the first house fire. There were two house fires and a vehicle fire. The first house fire, um, two people perished of smoke inhalation. Um, the second house fire, which we haven't heard very much about yet, um, the seven people died, the parents and five of their children. So the first person that we hear from on the stand yesterday was um, another fire department employee. This guy is, where's my tweezers? This guy, he's the lieutenant. So he was brought on to explain that when they first get to the fire, they can't just rush in and try to save these people. There's things that they have to do first. And when they got to this scene, um, they had to do what they call a blitz attack. Um, but even before they could do the blitz attack in this case, there was a live electric wire. When you see some of the photos in this, um, photos and video, right in front of this house are these huge electrical poles and lines running, you know, right over the house. And uh, later on, when we get to the video of the fire, you see... Once that fire gets going, you see the electrical bo box start sparking. So they've got to get this electricity off before they can get anywhere near this house that's on fire. So that's the first thing that they have to deal with. And then what they do is each fire truck uh, carries 500 gallons of water. So while some of the fire employees or fire firemen are trying to find a fire hydrant and hook up their hose, which in this case, apparently the fire hydrant was not very close to this house. They initially have this 500 gallons and during this blitz attack, they just pour the 500 gallons at the fire. So that's what they did in this case. They had to, they had to cool this fire down a bit before they could get into the house. So it was a bit of time before they could actually enter this house. Um, they did get a ladder up against the side of the house and they realized pretty quickly that these people were deceased. They, they could not rescue them. So I thought that was uh, interesting about the fire department. Um, the next witness 
um, he works for the state fire marshal. But before he worked for the state fire marshal, he worked for the Ohio Attorney General's office, which is how he became involved in this case. He left the Ohio Attorney General's office to go to the fire marshal's office, but he took the case with him. So he continued working on this case when he went to the fire marshal's office. He is a forensic digital analyst expert. And he was on the stand for hours, hours. Um, what, and his demeanor was very, he came off to me as very high functioning autistic, like maybe on the spectrum somewhere, just give it, like he really would not make eye contact with the attorneys. He would look in different directions. He was um, very slow and deliberate with his answers. He would ask them to repeat questions. It was interesting. So what he did was he took the footage from the house that was across the street, the footage from the house where the fire occurred, and other footage, as well as the alarm records, and combined them and made them into a timeline. He actually analyzed every single frame of both videos. He said there was, he did it from 10 p.m. till 3.30 a.m. on both videos, and it was over 100 frames for each video. Way over 100, <laughs> I might add. And the prosecutor went through every frame and he would say to this witness, what are we seeing here? What are we seeing here? He actually passed out a timeline, a paper timeline to the jury, which the judge said they could use while this guy was testifying, but it would be collected afterwards and they would have to rely on the memory. But they would have this individual's report, which contained a copy of the timeline. So it would be available to them during their deliberations. The prosecutor walks us through every frame of both videos, but he does it in the timeline order. Um, and then in between frames, if there's something from the alarm company, they put that in where it occurred. So what this individual was focusing on was this, anything that occurred during this time frame. There was a truck that kept driving by, driving by, that, like during this entire time, this truck would just drive by. It would pull into the back of Stanley Ford's house. It was, it, that appeared to be where it was coming from, the back of Stanley Ford's house. It would pull in and out. At one point, it even went to a gas station and an individual got out and went into the store and you couldn't really recognize who this individual was, nor whether he was filling up gas tanks or whether he was filling up his car with gas or his truck with gas. I'm curious to know if Stanley Ford owns that truck. They did not say. So you do see that truck quite a bit moving back and forth on the street. The other thing he focused on was the light in Stanley Ford's house that would go on and off, on and off. You do see individuals um, attempting to light this fire, an, an individual. Um, you would see the vehicle pull up, the lights turn off, an individual at, coming out of the vehicle, approaching the house where the fire was. You'd see him actually squeezing this bottle onto the house. And I'll put a picture of that here in a few minutes. And then you would see the flame ignite. And then the individual would walk away, get back into the truck. He would actually run away, get back into the truck. And then that truck would, it seemed to go behind Stanley Ford's house. Then you would see lights come on and lights go off. Now, as for the alarm, it was disarmed earlier that evening and never rearmed so that and you could actually come and go without having to worry about the alarm. It doesn't get, uh, rearmed or armed away until six o'clock that morning. And by arm away means that the person 
is actually leaving the residence, which would activate the inside motion sensor. So nobody's going to be in that residence. So from 6 a.m. on, nobody was home at Stanley Ford's house, but he was certainly home all night long when that alarm was off because he was going in and out of that house. You'd see the lights come on and then the lights go off and then you'd see him come out of the house and disappear behind the house and then you'd see the truck. Um, it was very, very interesting. So at the end of the prosecutor walking us through each and every frame of this video for hours, I might add hours, um, I did not watch it all because I realized what they were doing. I watched enough to where I could figure out, you know, once, once the video played, I knew which camera I was seeing. There were four different cameras on one house and one camera on the porch of the house that got caught on fire. So in the timeline, the cameras would switch. So the cameras that were on Clarence Williams' house, which was across the street, on one camera, you could see the house where the fire occurred. On another camera, you could clearly see Stanley Ford's two homes. So he had his cameras in perfect locations. So towards the end of the testimony, and now we're getting to, it's getting to be like two o'clock in the afternoon, we finally get to see the video because it's all been spliced together and we're gonna see everything we just talked about for hours in one video. And it was like complete silence in the courtroom. Like you could have dropped a pin and heard it watch it. And I was like, I stopped yarn. You know, I was crocheting. I stopped. I'm like, I gotta see this video. So I pulled some clips off this video. Here's what you see. You see this truck driving back and forth all during this time frame. Like I said, it was going behind Stanley's house. It would come out. The lights would go on. The lights would go off. So at 3.13 a.m., you see an individual approach the porch of Linda Lewis's house where the fire was. You see him spraying down the porch. Now, he's closer to the east side of the porch. He's spraying down this porch, and then he lights it on fire. I'll show you that picture. Then runs away. Well, apparently the fire goes out. <laughs> so there's some activity. The lights go on. The lights go off at Stanley Ford's house. Then again, at 326, you see this individual coming back to Linda Lewis's home, again with the spray bottle. He's spraying away and you see the flame. So this is the second attempt. He runs away, the flames go out. <laughs> so again, you see the vehicle going back and forth, the lights coming on and off at Stanley Ford's house. And then again at 3.34 a.m., he comes back for a third time. Now he's more west of the home. He was trying to light the fire on the side of the house in the first two attempts. So now he's back, now he's at the entrance to the porch. He's at the west uh, side of that house where the porch begins. He sprays down the thing and lights it on fire. Now this time it catches. Whoosh. He runs away. And this was at 334. Now the, the fire trucks arrive at 344, 10 minutes. And I'm telling you, they ran this video for 10 minutes. We watched this fire and my first thought was how how much could it just it couldn't have been that bad if it was only 10 minutes i'm telling you what this whole house was engulfed in flames within like the first minute or two um, these are wood framed houses with aluminum siding so we're watching this house up in flames so then you start seeing that electrical box popping and um, people did say they heard a couple of explosions. I don't know if that was the electrical box exploding or what it was they heard. You don't really see people start to come out until 
very near that 10 minute mark, then you start to see people um, coming towards the fire. But 10 minutes, this house was, at least the front of the house was engulfed in flames, like yeah. <laughs> so the fire truck arrives at 3.44. So those people that were in the house, they had literally minutes, not even minutes, seconds to figure out how the heck to get out of there, you know, to wake up, figure out what's going on, get their wits about them and get out of that house. Those two people that were in that, the upper part of that house didn't stand a chance. You know, instead of exiting out of the house, they go up to the bathroom. That's where the bedrooms were. They were upstairs. So they go to the bathroom because they know the fire is downstairs because it was started on the front porch. So now it's engulfing the living room and the smoke. You know, there's so much smoke. They don't know what's going on. They're getting disoriented from the smoke. How horrible for them. And to watch this fire like there was just kind of this stunned silence in the courtroom and when it ended the judge very quietly excused the jurors to take a break and you could tell like nobody was talking nobody not the prosecutors not the defense attorneys not the jury this courtroom was still silent she just kind of softly spoke you may take a break they walked out it ended she, and she said come back at 2.45, we'll start the cross-examination. Now, I did not listen to the cross-examination because typically what this lawyer does, the uh, defense lawyer, he just kind of, first he gives his little spiel. If you don't understand what I'm telling you, you know, what I'm asking you, please ask me to repeat the question. But he, he typically just walks you through the testimony you've already heard. So I don't know how much of that is going to go on if it does we're gonna be there for hours um, so I will watch that today I will let you know the other thing let's walk away from Stanley Ford trial um, there is another trial going on in federal court Elizabeth Holmes is being tried for fraudulently cheating her investors in the Theranos company she developed this method of taking blood, drawing blood that would only be in its teeny tiny vial and it would run hundreds of tests. Well, apparently it would, did not run those tests accurately. <laughs> it gave false results on people that had cancer, pregnancies, everything. So she is on trial for uh, defrauding her investors. So that is not being covered, but I'm going to do the research each afternoon and see if I can bring you um, just little updates on what's going on in that trial. Yesterday, they had opening statements. So um, if she's convicted, she faces 20 years in prison. So we will keep you updated on the Elizabeth Holmes case because it's super interesting. Now, on another note, you know, you've heard me talk about the other case, the Robert Durst case that went on for over 50 50 days, 50 days. It finally went to the jury yesterday. They had closing arguments. The jury has the case. <sighs> Unbelievable. Robert Durst is on trial for the murder of one of his best friends who I think figured out that he had murdered his wife. Uh, the guy is just like total, total loser. He's already in jail for murdering this other man <laughs> and dismembering him. So, and he's really, really old has cancer, doesn't have long to live, but I'll let you know what the verdict is because that's going to be interesting after a 50-some day trial. I think the jury would just go back there and go, guilty, I'm going, I'm out of here. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, so that's the uh, crime update, guys. So what happened this day in history? Okay, we got some interesting history here. In 1971, there was a prison riot in Attica, yes, which is in New York. Uh, Buffalo, New York, I believe. It was in 1971. What happened is as prisoners were being led to breakfast, they, they, they overcame the guards. And then they rushed into the center of this prison where they, could, they had access to all the cell blocks. They let everybody out. They took 39 people hostage. Uh, 
what was happening was they were protesting inhumane conditions. They were, they were only allowed to take one shower a week. Their mail was all being scrutinized. They had one roll of toilet paper per month and they claimed to have been mistreated. So they were very, very angry because uh, nothing was happening to resolve these issues. So they took over the prison, state police came in and regained most of the cell blocks without any injuries, but 1,200 of these prisoners end up in this, what they call the D yard. They're out in this yard. They take 39 hostages with them. They're blindfolded. The hostages were mostly employees and prison guards. They take them, they blindfold them, they put them in a circle in the middle of this and they're guarded by people with knives and these makeshift weapons that they put together, you know, while they were rioting. So now they're all out in this prison yard and they're negotiating for four days, four days. They were trying to get Governor Rockefeller at the time to come visit the prison. He wasn't having it. He's like, nope, we're not having it. I'm done with this. I want this thing over with. So he sends in helicopters that drop tear gas on the yard and sends in these state police and the National Guard. They've all got these gas masks on and they go in guns blazing and just start shooting in all. 10 hostages were killed by the gunfire, 29 of the inmates were killed, 89 people were injured, and even after these, these state police went in and the thing was over and they're trying to help the injured, they're, they were still killing these people. Like one reporter reports seeing a man down, he'd been shot, and an officer went over and shot him in the head and killed him. Another one that was injured and shot was made to crawl a certain amount of feet. I mean, horrible, inhumane treatment. And then after it's all over and the inmates are back in their cells, they were treated deplorably by these guards afterwards. They were made to crawl on their knees on glass. They were really, they were just really, really mistreated. Um, the guards were very angry. You know, they, they killed several of their coworkers. There was a class action lawsuit filed on behalf of the prisoners that lasted 23 years, 23 years. And this lawsuit was for the inhumane treatment. And the reason it lasted so long is because the lower, lower court ju judge didn't like this lawsuit and he was dragging his feet. 23 years before they finally obtained a sum of $8 million, which was divided amongst 500 inmates. They were asking for $2.8 billion. They got $8 million. Now the families of the slain officers, the one, some of those officers, the ones that were killed, the family took the death benefits. And by taking those death benefits, they were precluded from filing any lawsuit against the state. And then the ones that did, did survive but were injured cashed their paychecks. And they were told that because they cashed their paychecks, that precluded them from suing. So they were very, very upset with the state for not informing them of their rights. Um, before they cashed these checks or took these death benefits, but they never got to file any lawsuits on behalf of their loved ones in this matter. So sad. So sad. Anyway, yeah, happy days. <laughs> I know. It's crime, guys. It's crime. These are criminals. Okay. Um, yeah. What time is it? I gotta go to work. Gotta go to work. All right, it's Thursday. Wolfpack Diamond Painting is on 6.30 tonight. Check her out. She is part of the uh, group of us that are going to be doing the Monster Mash starting next week. A lot of you guys are getting your paintings. I'm so excited. Do your unboxings. Let's see them. Um, yeah, so I will see you tomorrow in Corrupting and Crime for more crime. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Take care.